So I, today I have the honor and privilege of introducing our uh, <laughs> Pogue lecturer, but also um, the unique new format that we have because um, what we and several investigators have been working on here are on cluster randomized trials. And um, so the topic is going to be on cluster randomized trials. And one of our own statisticians, Dr. Shunfu Li, also works in cluster randomized trials. And in fact, we learned today that she also got her PhD at Western University, the same place that our Pope's uh, speaker, Monica Talyar, got her PhD. And in fact, they had the same supervisors, Alan Donner and Niels Clark. So we had these unusual coincidences, but we already had planned this on the schedule. And um, so I will introduce first uh, Dr. Shinfu Lee, who's going to give a very brief uh, uh, lecture on the topic of cluster randomized crossover trials. And then I'll introduce our uh, co speaker, Monica Talia, who's going to be talking about stepped wedge designs. So I will um, just say that Dr. Shinfu Lee um, has been with us for about five years, or six years. Um, and uh, she's our local guru for cluster randomized trials. And uh, so we'll go ahead and without much further ado, have her present on cluster randomized crossover trials. So we'll have her. I'm so honored to be here to speak on Jimmy's book lecture. I still remember the day that Jimmy called me to give me the offer for this job. And then the last time I talked to her, she still encouraged me to do some methodology work on this area. So I want to talk about just a brief the introduction to cluster randomized trial. So cluster randomized trial is different to a traditional uh, individual randomized trial, which they randomize cluster instead of individuals. So randomize the unit, the unit of randomization will be uh, hospitals, schools, community, prediction, uh, uh, medical um, clinics. So on the, on the right hand side, the intervention we randomize the hospital for all the patients within that hospital will receive the intervention. And the hospital randomized to control and all the patients in that hospital will receive control. So why do we randomize cluster instead of individual patients? Usually intervention is more naturally applied to cluster level, such as um, healthcare system, healthcare policies, or uh, some guidelines. This is probably is more appropriate and not, um, uh, it's more naturally applied to cluster and not be appropriate or possible to randomize individuals. So also to avoid contamination, if there's a new guideline was implemented in a new clinic, it's harder for a physician to randomize some of his patient to new guideline and some of his patient to all, uh, the old guidelines. It's um, either the patient will share the guidelines or it's probably not ethical for him to treat the patient differently. And also randomized cluster some, uh, will have uh, more cost effective instead of doing a training to um, a same nurse with the two different intervention we can train nurse with one single intervention to avoid contamination or or we can uh, reduce the cost of training um, two different type of interventions so the two uh, two clusters um, trial that we have here at PHI, one is PADIC, which is already closed. They are comparing the vancomycin-based antibiotics prophylaxis versus standard care for the patient who received pacemaker or ICD implantation. So the, this is comparing institutional policy. It's, it's really hard to uh, do it individual level. So this is what's conducted at the cluster level. Another B3 trial, which is uh, ongoing, is called restrictive. Um, they, they, they restrict benzo use for, for patients who receive the cardiac surgery, or, uh, or so restrict 
benzoyl use versus the liberal benzoyl use. So this is again institution policies that they want to do a comparison, evaluate the institution policy. How does that affecting the outcomes, the patient's outcomes? So as compared with individual randomized trial, cluster randomized trials are actually less efficient because the unit of randomization is a cost label instead of individual label. It's randomized at cost label, but analyzed at individual label. In that way, we have less efficiency. We need larger sample size and then few units. Again, because um, some of the patient, they might have the similar characters going to the, belongs to the same hospital or belongs to the same community, they tend to have lack of independence. They tend to have a similar, similar responses within a cluster compared uh, of individual of different clusters. Okay? And also they are higher probability of a covariant imbalance because the unit, again, is a, uh, the unit of randomization is smaller if we randomize individual patients. They also will have selection bias because usually the consent is obtained after the randomization. The last one is uh, the study team or the physician usually is not blinded for the cost of randomized trials because they have to know the intervention. But the patient label usually is blinded. So it's harder to keep double blinded in this case for the cost of randomized trials. So because the cost of randomized require a larger sample size, another way to regain this efficiency is doing a stepwise design or a cluster crossover trial, which I will show in the next slide. The stepwise design is in the same cluster, we have them to receive both intervention control. So step switching is you have a hospital, they sequentially randomize, they cross over from control to intervention. So T1, T2, T3, T4, is that's the period and the time which each hospital are assigned, randomly assigned to cross from control to intervention. So in that way, each hospital, they have some period receive the control and some period receive the intervention. Each cluster acting as its own, that way we are able to reduce some of the, we are able to reduce the sample size needed for cluster randomized trials. So you, you will tend to use, uh, require less number of clusters compared to a cluster randomized trials. And the benefit also is Advantage of having a stepwise design is all cluster eventually will receive the intervention. So if the intervention tends to be beneficial, then um, then um, the cluster will be uh, likely to have those. And also confounded with temporal trend, and all class need to be ready at the beginning. So the next one is a cluster crossover. They cross over between intervention and control for different period. Not in the order of old control to intervention, but it's a randomized between control and intervention. The benefit of this is all the class will eventually receive the intervention. And sometimes we, we have a carryover effect or period effect, but this uh, less likely to happen because all the individual within period are different. 